Good day. Welcome back to Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction. So we are now on our MELC 6 entitled Vulnerability in Disaster. So our most essential learning competency for this uh, topic is explain why certain sectors of society are more vulnerable to disaster than others. For our objectives, we have explained why some sectors are more vulnerable to disaster than others and describe how different sectors find ways on how to lessen vulnerability of the community. So we are uh, using this learner's material, Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction, Pivot for A. So do not forget to to use this while you are watching this uh, guide video so that you can be able to answer all the learning tasks that are assigned to you. So under what's in page on page 30, so you have here your learning task number one. So directions, observe the situations happening in the Philippines regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. What could be the reasons why the number of cases keeps on increasing and has higher vulnerability uh, transmissible infectious disease. Do this on your answer sheet. It is very timely because um, it was just announced uh, this afternoon that uh, Lucena City as well as the entire Quezon province and other uh, provinces no, in, in uh, here in Calabarzon are either be under MECQ or GCQ. In our case, in Quezon in, and in Lucena City, we are under GCQ. And if you'll notice also that we have an increasing number of, uh, of positive in COVID-19, no? uh, not only here in Quezon Province, but in the entire Philippines. So you are being asked on this learning task number one. So what do you think is the, are the possible reasons why we have higher vulnerability? If you'll notice before, uh, maunti lang naman yung number eh, hanggang sa nagdoble, nagtriple na. Dati-dati, I think it's only two to 3,000, but now we have uh, 10,000, 12,000, no, cases. So what, what do you think are the reasons? Okay, so you have to write your answer on your answer sheet. So you have here under what's new, learning task number two. Um, recall the, the exits and entrances of your previous school. Recall mo yung exit sa ka entrance ng school niyo. So saan ka ba pumapasok nung pumapasok pa, nung, nung new nor, nung old normal pa? May gate ba yung school niyo? Pinto lang ba ang pinapasukan niyo para makapasok na sa school? Yung bang ex entrance doon din ang exit. Kung saan ka pumasok nung umaga, doon ka din balalabas sa hapon. Okay? And answer the guide questions based on your observation. Write your answers on your answer sheet. So let us now proceed to the discussion of this lesson. So under what is it? Factors affecting vulnerability of one's community. Let us now identify the different factors affecting vulnerability of one's community. In the previous video, we, uh, we have learned that um, the, the more we increase the vulnerability of a certain a community, there is a higher risk or there is a higher uh, probability that it will, that a hazard can be turned into disaster. Uh, we have two factors actually. So the first factor is that population density near a hazard event. Okay. So let us just clarify some of the terminologies. We have here population and population density. So population differs from population density. So, by definition, population refers to the number of individuals inhabiting in a particular space at the same time. Okay? Um, if people are well distributed, there is a lesser effect of disaster. So, halimbawa, what is the population of your barangay? Halimbawa, there are around 50,000 individuals or there are around 35,000 individuals. So, that is the population. Now, population density refers to the number of individuals living an, in an area in relation to the size of an area. So let's say sa barangay nyo, you have there, let's say 50,000, pero malaki naman yung area nyo. Diba? Versus, let's say sa isang barangay, meron silang population na 35,000, pero mas malakit yung area niya. 
So in that case, mas mataas yung kanyang population density. So the primary consideration is not the population size, but the population density. So parang uh, siksikan ba sila sa isang barangay? Siksikan ba sila sa isang location? Kung nakakawatak-watak pa sila, then therefore, uh, kaya pa. No? Ibig sabihin, hindi pa siksikan. Parang ganito din. Uh, now in, in the COVID-19 pandemic, To, to lessen the transmission of the virus, nagkaroon tayo ng tinatawag natin na physical distancing. So that is the, the density of the population. Kasi the more na magsisiksikan yung population, the more na magkakaroon ng pagdidikit ng mga physically, dikit ng skin, dikit ng damit, nagkakahingahan, then therefore the, the virus can be able to transfer from one person to another. Madala ng hangin or ma mahawakan mo yung isang tao na infected o yung kamay na inihawak ng isang tao iniha- na in- sa isang infected na inihahawak din sa iyo. So in that case, there is a chance na magkaroon ng transmission. So that's why we always implement social distancing. In this factor, we are talking about population density near a hazard event. So gaano ba kalapit yung, yung, ano, yung population density dun sa hazard? Let's say for example, Um, let's say fault line, the, the cause of earthquake, no? So may population density bang malapit doon sa fault line? Kung wala or kung meron, gaano kadami, no? Ilang ilang tao per square meter, uh, ilang tao per 10 square meter, ilang tao per uh, 100 square meter. So ganun, no? Now, bakit bakit pinag-uusapan? Because Um, as we all know that if a, if a disaster will happen and the higher number of population density, the higher number of it, that means na mas madami yung damage, no? Mas madami yung possibility na buhay na mawala because of that hazard. Another one is the capacity and efficiency to reduce disaster risk. So kanina is the exposure, kanina is the number of individual in an area, the density. So in this case naman, is the capacity of that population no, and its efficiency to reduce the disaster risk. Ibig sabihin, prepared ba yung community? Let's say siksikan. No? Let's say siksikan. But prepared ba no? yung, yung, yung population mo? Because community that is less vulnerable has capacity to reduce disaster risk. So what are the reasons? Una, it can provide accessibility and availability of services and facilities during and after disaster. So andyan na yung natural hazard, bumabagyo na. Since bumabagyo na siya, handa ba yung, yung community? Let's say, pagpalagay natin, madami talaga kasi mataas nga yung population, then maliit yung area. Now, handa ba siya? May evacuation area ba? May pagkain? May pang search and rescue ba? Because uh, these kind of factors, it has an effect on the efficiency to reduce the disaster risk. Yes, babagyuhin, hindi mo naman pwedeng iwasan yung bagyo, di ba? Hindi mo siya pwedeng iwasan. Then therefore, you have, you have to lessen your vulnerability by increasing this factor. no To become efficient, in the reduction, in, in reducing the effect. So, it has the ability to anticipate, adapt, and respond to possible disaster. So, yun. So, yun yung kailangan natin gawin. Uh, nakita na natin, nasa tabing daka tayo, or nasa tabing ilog tayo. Let's say, wala ka nang malilipatan kasi yun na talaga, doon na talaga kayo nakatira. Doon na nyo na nabili yung lupa. Diba? Doon na kayo may bahay. So, ano kailangan mong gawin? So, dapat ma- maging efficient ka in reducing the risk. Dapat handa ka. May emergency kit ka ba? May go bag ka ba? When you speak of go bag, ito yung bag na nandun lahat yung important documents ng family mo. May pagkain, may flashlight, may mga ready to eat food. no Huwag kang maglalagay dyan ang mga napapanis or nabubulok. Dapat yung mga, na- mga nasa lata na matagal pang expiration date. Mga first aid, no, mga medicine na kailangan in case na magkaroon nga ng hazard, in case na lilikas kayo, isang bit-bit lang yan. Dala mo na agad. So because of that, you can lessen the disaster. Kasi wala namang buhay na mawawala. Let's say, ma- sige, masira yung, yung bahay. Halimbawa, no, mabaha. No? Uh, pero buhay naman kayong lahat. 
di ba? So, ma- mababawasan yung effect ng disaster. So, let us now proceed to learning tasks. Directions given the following situations. Identify what factor affects the vulnerability to disaster. Write P if it is due to population density. And C if it is due to sector's capacity and efficiency to reduce disaster risk. So, Tondo community, during the local lockdown due to COVID-19 pandemic, wherein the, the families are forced to stay inside, their houses that are too small for the number of family members. Okay, the answer is letter P. It is population density. Bakit? Kita dyan, no? Too small for the number of family members. Masyadong maliit yung bahay para magkasya sila doon. So, so, since siksikan sila, there's a greater chance for the COVID-19 virus to to ano to transfer from one person to another another use of drones to disinfect the community in Pasig City to prevent the spread of the COVID-19 virus ito nakita ko to no uh, malaking drone siya may may lamang disinfectant then pinalilipad nila to dis, to disinfect the Pasig City no pina tatama yung hangin para ano ma, ma- disinfect sa so, kanyang mga building yan okay yes the answer is letter C capacity and efficiency to reduce the effect of disaster or to reduce the risk of a disaster. Insufficient number of rubber boats during ty- Super Typhoon Yolanda in Malabon City were in large number of residents were stranded on top of their roof. So ito yung mga eksena ano, kapag may typhoon tas baha yung mga tao nasa ibabaw ng, ng kanilang mga bubong. Ang case nito, hindi daw mailikas dahil kulang yung number ng rubber boats yung ginagamit nila pang likas. So, kaya nagstay sila doon sa mga stranded sila doon sa bubong ng kanilang mga bahay. Okay, so the, the answer is, yes, it is letter C. So let us now proceed to learning task number four. Explain why certain sectors of society are more vulnerable to disaster than others. So sino ba itong mga... Um, other sectors na to. Let's say, uh, senior citizen, children, a PWD, women, or those uh, living under poverty line, yung mga nasa himulmul ng lipunan, nasa laylay ng lipunan. So, yun. So, you have to identify. Let's say, for example, why do you think that the elderly, yung mga matatanda na, are more vulnerable to disaster than others? Okay, di ba? Kasi nga, matanda sila. So, it will be difficult for them to evacuate. May maintenance sila na na, na na medicine. Let's say, paglikas, hindi nadala. So, there's a chance na baka kung mapano sila, magkasakit lalo sila, dahil nga, uh, wala na sila, hindi nila nabitbit yung maintenance medicine nila. So, even in the, here, uh, in the pandemic, no? So, yung more vulnerable population, sila yung talagang hindi pinalalabas. More, more vulnerable because... Uh, mas madali silang kapita ng sakit because they are uh, there's a, they have a low immune system so, yeah. so you have to identify other sectors and you have to explain why they are more vulnerable to disaster than others so you have to cite a certain disaster no as a, a certain hazard and why do you think that they may be affected by more vulnerable to disaster than other sectors okay? so pwede mong pilihan Uh, elderly, uh, children, PWD, yung mga yun. So, learning task number five. So, this is the last learning task. What I can do? Directions, read the given situation, then answer the questions that follow. So, ano ba yung situation na binabanggit dito? So, you are the barangay captain of barangay Kanlubang. Your response team is deployed and you have your radio with you. Reports are streaming in for assistance and relief goods. Mobile patrols are having a difficult time going around due to lack of accessible barangay roads. At the same time, the barangay is heavily populated, so there was a shortage of response vehicles to assist the victims that deliver relief goods to the evacuation area. So, po, uh, pagpalagay natin, no, you are the barangay captain. So, what are the things that you have to do? So, these are the guide questions. So, what do you think are the possible problems being faced by Barangay Kanlubang? So, given the situation, di ba? Uh, walang access road, ano pa, kulang ng rescue vehicle, and so on. So, in this kind of situation, food, what do you think is the liability of the local officials as well as the national government? Yan. Guide question is that, suggest three possible solutions based on your identified possible 
problems. So, doon sa number one, you were able to identify problems. And then, on the third number, you have to suggest solutions to address the problems that you were able to identify in number one. So, in that case, so let us now end this video lesson. So, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are properly guided by this video. So, do not forget to answer all your learning tasks and submit them uh, by uh, online or by uh, a hard copy. Thank you so much for watching. Keep safe.